Okay. Hi, everybody. So excited to uh, have our webinar uh, today. Good afternoon. Uh, good evening, depending on where you are in the country. Uh, my name is Terry Hammett. I'm an instructional strategist with Wayside Publishing, and I'd like to welcome you to today's webinar. Um, we're going to be talking about using our online platform, uh, the learning site, and we are recording today's session. So it will be available for you in about 24 hours. For those of you who have registered for the webinar, you'll get an email with the link to it. If you did not register for it, you can find this webinar on our website, along with a lot of other uh, webinars that will be done and will and have already been done. You can find those at way, waysidepublishing.com. Um, before we get started, I'd like to tell you a little bit about myself. So I'm going to um, switch over to the PowerPoint here, which you may already be seeing, seeing, but I'm not. So just to tell you a little bit about myself, my name is Terry Hammett. As I said, I was a French and French immersion teacher in Louisiana for 20 years. Um, I was also a cur curriculum leader with my schools. Uh, here in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. For 12 years, I was state supervisor of world languages in Louisiana and um, at the Department of Education. I've also been on several executive committees, the Louisiana Foreign Language Teachers Association, the Council on the Development of French in Louisiana, the Louisiana Consortium of Immersion Schools. I've been a consultant for world languages and immersion. Uh, I was a um, uh, I worked for the French Ministry of Education to uh, develop correctors and examiners of the DELF exam, uh, which is the national language exam. I've worked for, I've consulted with TV5 Monde, and I am now an instructional strategist or instructional coach with Wayside, and I'm super excited to be with you here tonight. Uh, joining me in this webinar today is Michelle Ola. She's also an instructional strategist. She's an awesome person, and I'll let her uh, tell you a little bit about herself. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm here from sunny, way too hot Florida already. It was 91 degrees today. I know some of you across the country probably had snow, so you don't feel sorry for me, but this is heading into our worst season in Florida when you're heading towards your best season in the rest of the world. So um, I'm happy to be here today as a support. Um, I am, I've been a Spanish teacher. You can kind of see some things, all that to be said that um, we're here with a wide range of experiences in the classroom and outside of the classroom um, as instructional coaches for you. So if you have any questions for Terry and myself, you can, type them in the question box and we will be answering those as they come up and just wanted to say thank you for being here today and um, welcome and we hope that we're able to um, help you with your transition or learning about the learning site a little bit deeper. Back to you Terry. Okay thanks Michelle. Yes, so uh, we also have another amazing educator with us. That is Kristen Bleas. She's also an instructional development coach. And uh, Mich uh, excuse me, Kristen is supporting us in the background today. Uh, she, she will be answering all of the questions that you send in. And we'll also have some time after the webinar, after the presentation here of the learning site to answer some more questions. Jennifer Cornell, who was um, going to be with us tonight, and then something came up. She is actually the Learning Site product owner, which really means that she's kind of the, the specialist in the Learning Site. Uh, she, she said she thought that we, the three of us, would be able to handle all of the questions. However, if we have um, any questions that we cannot answer, um, that we, we can reach her by email, and she would send the the answers to the questions back and you'll receive something within 24 or 48 hours from her for any questions that we cannot answer. So between the four of us, if you have any questions, we should be able to help you. Uh, 
So if you run into any technical issues or you, if you have any questions along the way, you can notify Kristen via the question pane here that's found on your control panel. Uh, we'll also be taking, as I said, we'll have some questions later during the second part of the webinar. Also, uh, check out the announcement portion uh, lower um, on your control panel for a link to more resources that are available and provided by website to support you. Additionally, we have some handouts that are available along with this webinar, a uh, learning site, um, a step-by-step -step guide to on how to use the learning site, and also um, some tips for making the learning site work for you remotely during this COVID-19 time. So, uh, yeah, so we're looking forward to supporting you as much as we can. By the end of our session tonight, we are hoping that you will be able to, actually our goal is that you will be able to navigate the online learning site, which has three parts. It has the flex text, the explorer, and the portfolio. And uh, we hope that you can navigate those in order to find resources. You should be able to do that after this webinar. Additionally, it is our goal that you will be able to integrate the online components of the learning site to engage students, facilitate the feedback, and promote student self-assessment. So we have a poll here. We've told you a little bit about ourselves. Now we'd like to learn a little bit about you. So Michelle, do you mind launching that poll for us? You bet. All right. First question, what is your comfort level with navigating the website? So just take a couple moments and uh, respond to this poll, please. And by website, Carrie, you mean the learning site, correct? Yes, the learning site, thank you. Okay, looks like, all right. Uh, can you give us the results of the poll? All right, thanks, Michelle. So we've got 30, wow, 33, 33, 33. All right, 33% of you say this is still a goal, okay? So this webinar is definitely for you, okay? 33% of you say you can do this with help. Well, we will be helping you today. Um, and 33% say that you can do this independently. So for those of you who say that you can do this independently, I just want to let you know that tonight's webinar is really a basic overview of our learning site. Okay, it's not as advanced, perhaps it's not as advanced as what you were expecting. So um, we'll leave it up to you. We are going to be offering some additional webinars. We have a webinar coming up on Tuesday night about assessment and feedback uh, during this COVID-19 time. That should be really interesting. We had a wonderful webinar last week on the classroom forum that you might want to check out. All of our webinars you can also find on our website at wysidepublishing.com. So let's go ahead. Thanks, Michelle. Let's uh, do the second question, please. What is your comfort level in using the learning site, this time with students? Okay, so take a few minutes, take a few moments in using the learning site with students. Wow. All right, you wanna close that up, Michelle? Okay. Okay. All right. I, I'm not surprised. Okay. This is still a goal for 60% of you. 20% of you can do it with help and 20% of you can do this independently. All right. Okay. So a lot of you are here and uh, yeah, I, I'm excited. I, I think we can provide you some direction here. And the third poll. 
how often do you use the learning site with students? Never one to three times a month, one to three times a week, or daily. Okay, Michelle, looks like we're there. All right. Okay, good. So 60% of the people, 60% uh, of our participants are here for a really good reason. Okay. Those of you who use it daily, if you have some extra tips that you want to write in for us, um, we'd be glad to have those as well. Okay. Um, all right. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on. Thank you so much for participating in that poll. Really appreciate it. So our agenda for this evening, we're going to look at the flex text. We're also going to look at Explorer uh, and all of its content, okay? Uh, that's where all of our resources are kept for remote learning. We'll look at the assignments, uh, the online calendars, and um, the ways that you can remind students of upcoming assignments. We'll look at grading and providing students feedback on their learning skills. We'll look at the classroom forum, which is uh, a wonderful tool for us, especially right now. We'll look at the online portfolio that students can use to self-assess on previously learned materials. Um, that's a really important tool that we have available at this point in time. And then we'll have time for question and answer, questions and answers, okay? So right now we're going to delve into the learning site online. If you have your account credentials handy, you are very welcome to follow along as we walk through the various components. It might be helpful to you have, for you to have your screen up at the same time as we're working through this. Uh, also remember to post any questions in the question pane on the control panel. Um, and we are going to move on into the learning site. Okay, so I'm gonna close out this PowerPoint here. and get the learning site over. Thanks so much for waiting, everybody. Okay, great. All right, we have it together now. If you put your if you put your credentials in, like I did, um, you should arrive at uh, this dashboard. Okay, we're going to take you on a tour right now at a very basic level. Um, and when you put in your credentials, obviously this is where you arrive. Okay. Um, and here you can see all of the different courses that you are teaching. Well, actually on, on the screen, on my screen, I see all of the different courses that I am responsible for. Your, uh, your screen is not going to look like this, but um, because I'm here at Wayside working, I'm working with all of these materials. You'll notice that um, we have Explore courses at the top. These indicate all of our, um, all of the courses. Okay, it's the flex text and the learning site. And then down here, the next portion, we have the flex text library, which are just the text by themselves. So I'm going to move back up. Now, when you come into the learning, when you come into the learning site and you're on the dashboard, you're going to see two things that are, are pretty important when you open up. The first thing is the notification bell here on the right, okay? It's to the right of your name and your profile. If you click on that notification bell, 
then you're going to see all kinds of um, activity that has taken place on the learning site in your class, okay? For example, I have a few students who have just turned in assignments, okay? I can, I can scroll all the way down if I wanna see everything that um, is on, all of my notifications that are available, okay? I can see them all here, notifications. Um, if, they're in, if they are things that I've already read about, I already know that Catherine Cummins already turned in her work and Kevin Fisher already did his, then I can mark everything as read, okay? And that'll clear it all out. So um, you can also click on each student. If you want to look at their um, homework attempts, you can click on each student and take a look there and see what's going on. Um, but basically, that is uh, the notification page, okay? The, the notification bell. Also, something that's really cool, um, the news that, Web, that Wayside puts out all the time, if there's something new that's coming up, then you can click on the What's New tab, okay? So I'm clicking on the What's New tab, and there's some pretty exciting information here. And that is that, um, let's see, it says, download the Google Classroom Integration Guide and watch a tutorial. So Wayside just recently integrated Google Classroom into its website. This is new. This is good news, because I know a lot of people are using Google Classroom. So if you are, then this is a great um, video for you to watch and a great integration guide for you. We have a lot of information on our website about integrating sites, learning management systems like Schoolology, like Canvas, like Moodle, and, and all different kinds of things. So those are available. Uh, okay, so we're going to go from there. Also, uh, at the very bottom of the page, it says need help, okay? So anytime that you're not sure uh, and you have a question about something, you can go to the need help tab and there's all kinds of information on here, like the knowledge base of tips and tutorials for the learning site, uh, learning site at a glance, getting started, there's all kinds of frequently asked questions that are available. Also, feedback, okay? So um, if there's a feature that you wish that you had, if you have an idea for improvement, like you might have some great ideas. Our teachers are the ones that we actually listen to in order to improve our product. So if you have any wonderful ideas or like, gee, I wish I really had that for um, teaching for my students, then let us know. Okay, you can send feedback, you can email us and send the feedback if you want, you can call us on the phone on Mondays through Fridays at 8.30 to 4.30 Eastern Time. Um, so that's a really important feature that you'll find on the dashboard. So, let's see. Um, so here I am back at my dashboard again and I just want to want you to know that all of our textbooks that we have, whether it's the French, Entre Couture, if it's the Spanish, Entre Culturas, if it's the AP, if it's Italian, whatever it is, all of our textbooks are laid out in a similar fashion. So um, no matter what you teach, this, um, this webinar about the learning site will be applicable for you. So I am going to do um, something, let's see, I'm going to enter into Entre Couture, the French one book, second period, okay, of teaching. Um, and notice that when I opened that <clears throat> textbook up, when I opened the course up, I ended up in this folder. It's called the content folder, okay? Um, the content folder, as my colleagues all describe it, is um, the, the file that you open that can remind you of when you were the brand new teacher in a school, in a new school, okay, and you walk into the new school and somebody comes up and they hand you this giant box 
and in the box is all of your materials, all of the, the paper activities maybe that are available for you that Miss Monsieur Boudreau or uh, Senora Garcia left for you to do um, when they after they left last year, they said, here's the box for the new teacher. So you could also think of it as a filing cabinet. The thing is, you know that there's really, really good stuff in that filing cabinet or in that box, but you don't have any context to categorize these things in your mind because you're brand new and you haven't used the materials yet. So that's what this content file is. It's a fantastic file because it has everything in it. We have the videos, the audios, all of the activities, everything on the learning site is housed here, even activities that are not in the textbook. The thing is, there's a much easier way to get into the content file or into the learning site. Let's put it that way. There's a much easier way to get into the learning site, and that is for us to go through the flex text. Okay, but we're not going to go through the flex text right now. We're going to take each one of these uh, tabs and look at them um, so we can very basically go through um, the learning site and help you here. So uh, what I'd like to do just for a second and while we are in content is I want to point out a couple important folders. The first folder I want to point out, in case you're ever looking for it, it's way down at the bottom, okay? It's the Classroom Forum folder. And we talked about that. Michelle is going to talk with you about the Classroom Forum shortly, okay? That file is right down there in the content file. And then another really important file, um, aside from all of these unit files, another really important file is the resources file. And the resources file has incredible tools for you to use, okay? Just really wonderful. We've got the graphic organizers, you've got Venn diagrams, Y graphic organizers, uh, we have tables, we have comparis comparisons, all kinds of things that you can use, all types of graphic organizers are listed here, okay? Not listed here, but available here. All of the materials for our grammar lesson, in French, it's Découvrant, in Spanish, it's Observa, okay? So we, we've got that here for, for both level one and for level two. We have a file called Resources for Teachers. I'll come to that in a second. We have all of the rubrics that are available, and these rubrics are, are incredibly awesome. I don't know of another textbook series that actually offers this type of thing, but all of our rubrics are there. All of the can-do statements for communication and for interculturality are there. And last thing is there's a scavenger hunt for you or for your students to use to get to know the textbook, the, the flex text, a little bit better. Real quickly, we're going to go up to see what teacher resources are available. Um, some really good stuff here. Culture notes. We have midterm and final assessments that are, are really good and very similar to what the students are doing in um, Giariv or in um, the Spanish summative assessment. Uh, we have answer keys. We have um, all of the audio files, authentic resources, uh, scope and sequence, which a lot of you are probably looking very carefully at right now as you're watching the school year come to a close and your scope and sequence, your personal scope, scope and sequence for your students and for your school year has is going to have to evolve as well as for next year, it will change. Okay, so all of your resources are here. Um, also, how to use the online student portfolio. Really great information. So that is our content folder. Okay, um, 
All right, so that's tab one. We're going to move on to tab two here, which is we're going to look at grades. So when you click on the grades tab, you come up with what pops up is a roster, your class roster here. Okay, you also see the quizzes that your students have taken. And by quiz, I actually mean anything that has to be graded. So maybe it's not in the technical sense a quiz, maybe it's just an activity. But on our learning site, anything that needs to be graded is considered a quiz. Also, we have um, <clears throat> on our website here under the, the grades tab, we, we see everything that needs grading. So actually, I've been doing a pretty good job here. I have uh, got to grade some things for Molly, and, but she's turned in a lot of things. And uh, Serena has uh, two things that need to be graded. Uh, and when I say graded, I'm talking about the number of activities that need to be manually graded. Because anything that is, say, uh, true, false, multiple choice, matching, anything like that can be graded by the learning site itself. Okay, automatically graded and the student gets immediate feedback, which I know at least my students love to get the immediate feedback. That's a really good thing. Uh, so uh, this is our grades tab. We're going to take a quick look at one of our students here. I think we'll go see what Serena's done. We'll go a little bit deeper. Okay, so she has started all of her activities here. Okay, um, but we have a couple that still need evaluation. Um, so let's go take a look at, okay, the question logique here. Okay, we see the time for that is five minutes and we see that Serena, actually there are two parts to this um, activity. She did the first one and was graded. The second one she was not graded on. So we'll take a look at what we what she submitted. Okay. So the question was choose three of the seven questions from the previous step and provide a personal answer here. She did that. Okay. I'm reading them right now. It is actually it's perfect. Uh, there's no problem here. So I can go ahead and give her a grade for that and I can write a comment in there, okay? So my comment could be anything like uh, fantastic job, you know, bravo, um, keep up the good work, whatever, and then I can save that comment and she will get a notification saying that I have left her feedback, okay? So uh, that is our grading tab, okay? So we are going to move on now to our third tab, the assignments tab. The assignments tab shows all of the activities that have been assigned, okay? And, you know, it's April, so there are a lot of them. We can see the type of activity. We have a video here. We have a document there. Uh, we have a forum here, all different kinds of activities along with their titles. We have when the um, we have when the assignment was uh, actually assigned and the due date. We have the the uh, reminders. Okay, here's a reminder that this one, this activity, is due tomorrow. Here are two of them that are due today. Okay, I think they're due at eight o'clock tonight. Um, we can see how many students um, were assigned the work and how many actually completed. We can edit the due dates and the times. Okay, that's important. Maybe you change your mind about something. And you can see the students to whom this assignment was assigned. So um, those are all pretty um, great functionalities of this assignment tab. Take a look up here. There's a yellow dot and it says that these uh, assignments with yellow dot mean that they require grading. So I'm looking for any yellow dots along my 
student tab, I see one, okay? So basically, actually it's the one uh, that we just looked at with Serena, okay? So um, yeah, so I've been doing a good job with my grading. Um, you can also archive, you see this yellow button here, you can archive items um, to tidy things up. So maybe after each unit, you archive items, maybe quarterly after each marking period, you, you um, archive items. You can remove items if you, again, if you change your mind. And you can add assignments at the, the green tab here. This is one of the three ways that you can add assignments. Um, so if you already know what it is you want to assign, okay, I know that I'm in unit two. I know that I'm in, uh, let's see, I'm gonna choose to be in the grammar section. And here are, I know I want to assign les articles indéfinis, indefinite articles, I want to assign activity nine, okay, and maybe I want to do this one as well. Okay, so those are three assignments. I'm going to block assign them. Super easy, just click and drag. Um, the next step is to select the students. You can choose all of the students or you can choose just a few. You can differentiate in the activities for different students. So I'm going to select all of my students. Then I'm going to go ahead and click the next step and I'm going to assign. So let's see, I think I'll assign this to be due on Monday after the weekend and it'll be due in the evening. Um, it's possible if you do not want to have a due date, like if you have students looking at flashcards or something else, watching a certain video, you can click no due date, okay? Then you can assign, you can assign it now, you can give them the assignment now, or you can assign it with delay, meaning that Let's say um, you're, you're working on your lesson plans. I know I used to do that on Sundays. And Sunday night, you're realizing you need a sub on Thursday. So you can put up an assignment on, thir on Thursday morning. An assignment will appear. You can set it up so it will appear on the student's assignment calendar. That's called assign with delay. So um, that's another feature that we have. Another thing on the assignments tab that's uh, very helpful is you have a calendar view. Okay, so here's April. Haven't done a whole lot of assignments in April, but this is the month of April. The red triangle here indicates that there are over, there's overdue work. Okay, so we have a number of those, a couple in March and one on April 8th, and then uh, the yellow circle means for the month of April here that there are things that require grading. So um, know that the students also have this calendar list um, that they can access as well. As a matter of fact, when they open up their calendar, when they open up their assignments tab, the calendar appears. That's the default. And if they go ahead and click on one of the assignments on one of the days, the assignment will pop open and they can just start on working on it. Okay. So that's our assignment tab. Uh, let's see, we're going to move on to our students tab. I hope everybody's with me. Um, I don't hear any questions or anything. So we're just going to move on to our students tab. Okay, here we have our students tab and when we open it up, our entire class roster appears. Okay, uh, you have the opportunity to add students here to your class. You have the opportunity to transfer students in or out of your class. Um, next to the name of each student, we have their email address and you have the opportunity to view their online portfolio 
for student goal setting and self-assessment. So um, this is not meant for a grade, this online portfolio. Students come in and they set their goals and they upload evidence to show that they've actually meet, they've actually met the goals. So they might record an audio, they might record a video, they might do quizzes. There's all kinds of things they can do to uh, prove, to show evidence that they have actually met the goals to some degree, either uh, with help or independently. Um, you, as the teacher, can go in and add comments to the portfolio. Um, so let's just take a look. I'm going to open up one of these students. I'll do Katherine Campbell here. Um, before I do that, just know that the portfolio is really, we might say it's owned by the student. So if you have a student who was in Entre, who is in Entre Culturas um, 3 and they took, uh, they were in level 1 and level 2 and now they're in level 3, all three of those years are, are theirs, okay? They're online. They can go back, they can look, they can see their progress throughout the three years. You as a teacher can also go back and look at their, pro at their progress over the three years. Um, you as the teacher can comment on their progress during the year that you have them. Um, so in uh, year three, you can look at years one and two, but you cannot um, make any comments for um, those first two years. Uh, let's see, the can-do statements in the portfolios cannot be edited. That's about the only thing that cannot be edited in them. So here's Catherine's um, portfolio, okay? And we're going to, we can filter this by result, okay? We can show which, um, which can do statement she's completed or not completed. We can show the categories, whether uh, this is the communicative um, can do or the intercultural can do. You can filter by unit. Uh, so let's see what I'm going to do is filter by completed. And I'm going to click on uh, this example for you of Kat, of Catherine's. So she has two bars. She marked herself with two bars for this can do. It says, I can identify some familiar products, landmarks and monuments and what they represent to the Francophone people. So she can do that. She says she can do it uh, with help. Okay. Two bars is with help. Three bars is with um, she can do it independently. Okay, so she says, I did well on this assignment. She uploaded something and I compared what I saw in the Francophone world with my community. What she uploaded was an audio video, uh, an audio um, upload. Let's see what it is. Um, I know the Eiffel Tower is in Paris and um, it's a really tall statue. Okay, and we can go on and listen to that, but we'll stop there. So um, that's her evidence. I can, as her teacher, I can add a file to help her out because she still has a little bit further to go on this to reach a three. Maybe I want to give her a handout on French perfume or French fashion or some of the monuments in Paris. Um, I can also leave her an audio recording. Okay, I can. Um, talk to her, and then I'll save it, okay, and um, she can get that information from me, um, and she will get a notification about that as well. So that is our online portfolio. That is how you get to the online portfolio per student. If you want to look at the portfolio as a whole, you can click up here, okay, on this uh, green banner. All right, so we're moving right along. 
We've done our content, grades, assignments, students. We're going to skip the flex text for just a minute and move on to settings. Okay, interestingly enough, there are a number, of, there are some defaults in our programs, okay, on our learning site. Um, but there are a few things that you can change the default on. So for example, for assignments, on our assignments, um, there is, the default is that there is no penalty for a late assignment. If you want to change that, you just come over here under settings and you click and say yes, okay, yes, there will be a penalty. And then here you, uh, you click on the percent that you would like to deduct for as a penalty for late assignments, okay? And then you save it, all right? You have, um, you have control over that. The other thing that you have control of, one other thing you have control of is a hide, hide the pass fail student status in the grade books. So the hide the pass fail status is default. In other words, when students are looking at their grade book here, the default is that they cannot see pass or fail. If you want them to see pass or fail, then you click yes. You can also um, set the number of quiz attempts, the maximum number of quiz attempts. Okay, so at this point in time, um, the default is three. Okay, so the, the highest attempt will be taken, the first attempt will be taken, and the last attempt will be uh, recorded. Okay, and then the average of those three will be recorded. Okay, that is the way it's set up now. If you want to change it, you just change the number right over here. You want five attempts for your students, one attempt for your students, 20 attempts, whatever. Okay, so you can change that there. Um, also, if you want to set a passing grade, I know a lot of school districts around the country, 60 is the passing grade, uh, but maybe your district is different. So you can change that and you can save your changes. The last functionality, which is important, okay, is where you can customize your course by showing students only the content that you want them to see. So that means that you can hide some folders, okay? And I can think of a few instances where you might want to do this, okay? For example, let's see, uh, we're in unit two, Okay, and in unit two, we have a summative evaluation at the end, okay? And um, for this summative, it's an IPA. The whole, the IPA, the directions for the IPA are in the textbook and in the flex text, but what's not in the textbook are the files and everything that goes along with the summative assessment, the IPA maybe some audio files, maybe some video files, some other authentic resources, and maybe you would prefer that your students not see that before they do the IPA at the end of the chapter, okay? So you can hide that. Um, let's see. So you can go and you just click on, in French, that's j'y arrive, okay? I'm gonna click on that, and that will take away, um, the opportunity for students to see what is actually there, the content that is actually there. So um, I know one thing that I used to do was with, if we were working on the first unit, then the students would not see the second through the sixth unit, okay? It just seems a little bit like too much material for them to absorb at once. I don't know, maybe that wasn't such a good decision, but that's what I did. That was the material that I hid. Um, but I think the IPA thing is something that you might definitely want to consider. Okay, so you can show and hide content there. Okay, I hope you're still with me. Um, we've got our settings. The last tab that we're going to look at is our flex text tab here. Okay, 
When you click on that, you have two flex texts that show up. The one on the left is your student edition, which is the edition that you will use or you can use um, to project on your screen because the teacher's edition has all kinds of uh, red print in it, teacher notes, okay? By the way, there are also fantastic teacher notes in your appendices. We'll talk about that shortly. But um, so the student edition is probably what you will want to project on the screen. Right now, for our planning purposes, we're going to go to the teacher edition. And it is automatically opening up to the last page that I was on in unit two. Okay. And this is like pretty helpful. Okay. You don't have to remember, you don't have to make a note for every individual class where you are, your teacher's edition and the student edition as well. Open up to the last page that you were on. You also may not have noticed that in addition to that, you have a sidebar over here. It is, um, oops, it is in hamburger mode. Okay, this is a hamburger menu um, in the sidebar here. Um, and the entire text is, is here in the sidebar. By the way, if you want to get rid of the sidebar and make your text larger, you can do that. Okay, that's a nice functionality. But here is everything that is available in the flex text. Okay, it mirrors your hardback edition. Um, couple things in here that I think you would enjoy um, if you have time, and you may have time right now. We've got all kinds of maps of the French or Spanish speaking world. We have the actual readiness standards. Once again, the scope and sequence approaches to teaching. I mean, just like really good, fascinating stuff cutting edge research that uh, Wayside bases its um, textbooks on, okay? Assessing language performance and context, all the rubrics. Here's the icons legend, okay? So if you're not sure what the icons all mean when you're looking at the textbook and you're trying to uh, plan your lessons, here they are, okay? Take a screenshot, print it out put it by your desk, uh, just keep that available. There's a scavenger hunt for you or your students to do to get to know the textbook better. Um, additionally, uh, let's see if I can get down there. No, let me close this back up. Okay, also I talked about the teacher edition appendices. These are really, really, really incredible, okay? And they're, these are um, also something that makes Wayside unique are all of the appendices of can-do statements. You have an AP and IB correlation guide. You have all the transcripts of the audio and video files. Um, you have instructional strategies in the back. So if you don't see something in the red print along uh, the unit um, that you're working on, please check. The, um, the instructional strategies at the back, some really wonderful um, resources there. So all kinds of great things. I highly recommend that you go take a look at that. Okay. And then, okay, let's go back here. Okay, we, we're at our hamburger menu. You can also search in your text by keyword. I don't recommend that just because you type in there school supplies, you're going to get a hundred different entries and possibilities. My suggestion is to go to the jump to page. Okay, I want to go to page 106. Okay, and then I just enter that and I immediately end up on uh, page 106. It's probably easier to do it that way. Another awesome functionality of the textbook, the textbook for students and also for teachers is this annotation, the pen and pencil um, icon here. 
And here, this means that, um, let's see, I've got a yellow note. I'm going to click on it. Okay, it's going to take me to where I highlighted this activity. Okay, and um, my yellow highlight here actually means that um, I would like to highlight with yellow optional ways to do certain activities. Okay, so here my my message to myself is you can I can do this activity with my students online or on paper in class. Okay, I've got a green uh, highlight 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 and also post it here. Uh, here it says Sam was absent. So all of my green um, post-its are about Sam or somebody, a student who's being absent, absent and their, uh, the work that they need to complete. I've got a purple one. Uh, that's purple indicate that these are great activities for subs. Okay, so you can do that as you like. Um, color code your highlights. It's a really nice functionality. All right, just a couple more things on the flex text here. Okay, so I would like to be on page 106 again. Okay, now in the flex text, and actually you'll see this green icon, it's a compass actually. You will also see that in your hard copy. If you click, on this green compass, activities that go along with, this is a vocabulary unit, all of the activities that go along with that will appear. And look where they appear. They appear in your content folder, okay? That's the folder that we talked about that you didn't want to start in, okay? You accessed it through the flex text and now you've got all of these activities to go along with your vocabulary unit. So uh, let's see, here's something. Let's click on one of the activities. You can download the file if you want, put it on a, a hard drive, a, a pin drive, or on your hard drive. You can put it on Classroom Forum that Michelle's going to talk about in a minute. You can assign the activity if you like. Okay, same ways to assign as we talked about before. Okay, um, so there, there you go. Okay, it's a really nice uh, way to assign activities. All right, uh, another thing that you can do, let's see, I'm going to go down a little bit further in this vocabulary unit. Okay, here's another um, compass. Okay, I'm going, and I, also I see that it's a video. Okay, so it's a receptive mode of communication activity. And I can click on this and I can actually enlarge the video to be full screen if I like. I can, uh, move it so that it's picture in picture, okay? Meaning that if the students have something that they are working on, let's say that maybe they're, they need the video for this activity here, and then they can actually watch the video. Oops, maybe it's there, it goes. Pendant la semaine, mes camarades et moi avons neuf matières différentes. Okay, so that's another functionality that we have. Okay, all of these activities here go with the video. Whoops, yes, you can even add notes to it. Um, all right, so let me just go here for a second. Okay, once again, we're back in the content tab. Okay, you can download, assign, whatever you need to do. And look, your flex text is right here. You can go exactly back to the flex text, either teacher's edition or student edition. And um, you've not lost any time at all. It takes you right back to where you were. All right, let's see. I'm going to uh, stop here for now. Um, we have gone through, um, well, gosh, we have gone through every one of these tabs. 
okay? We've gone through the dashboard, we've gone through the portfolio, uh, we've gone through Explorer, we're gonna look at Classroom Forum now. So Michelle, um, Michelle, would you like to go ahead and uh, present the Classroom Forum? Yes, I was having issues unmuting myself. So yes, let me go ahead and pull up the dashboard. And I will share that with you in just one second. All right, hopefully everyone can see the dashboard. And we're gonna go ahead and look at the classroom forum piece. Uh, the classroom forum is kind of one of those hidden gems that now all of a sudden with uh, COVID-19 and everyone working uh, remotely and trying to do teaching and learning and figuring out all these hacks and tricks that we've really gotten to know some really cool features of it that really were over, uh, overlooked before. So I'm just going to go ahead and enter the um, Spanish 2 just for a change of pace. Um, and when I clicked on the textbook, again, you've, this should look familiar, though it's just in Spanish instead of French, and Terry went over all of these things, but we're, you're going to scroll down, and right here on the main page, you're going to see Classroom Forum. The Classroom Forum is, this one is a general one, so you can use it for anything. So there are some Classroom Forum discussions that are, are tied to specific assignments, but this is just an empty forum that you can use to communicate with your students. So we're gonna go ahead and click on the Classroom Forum, and I'm gonna show you a little bit what it looks like and what are some things that you can do with it. So right now, one of the things you can do, so you can turn this into an online discussion board. So you can add images to it, you can add text to it, so, and I'm gonna show you, we're gonna do an example together, but in this example, I'm gonna use this, let's say my students are not with me every day. So instead of writing the agenda or writing some things on the board, like the can do targets, I'm gonna have them every day go to the classroom forum and give them their instructions of where to go and what to do. You can of course assign the assignments, but that requires them to know exactly what you want to do and you might want them to do some things other than just complete the assignments. You want some interaction, for example. So I might post a this week overview. I might give them the learning goals, the can do statements. I might insert, I might make a checklist for them in like Google Drive or someplace or another, you know, another system. And I might put, a, I might attach that file for that checklist that they can print out on Monday, for example. And as they go through their assignments for the week, they can stay organized and focused and nothing will kind of fall through the tracks in a perfect world. Um, I could either do a link to it or I could actually attach that file. I could attach a PowerPoint that I want them to watch. I could put a video in there. Um, and then I can also have them, give them a prompt here and ask them to do something. So I know a lot of uh, schools and teachers are kind of taking attendance through some sort of interaction with the students, like they actually logged in and did something. So you might just ask a simple question in Spanish and the students would go ahead and reply to that and you could see that they are, you know, you can ask them how they're doing, you can ask them, give them a photo prompt that they write a couple sentences about maybe. Um, some other things and we're going to go through, I'm just showing you a couple ideas for some examples and I'll show you how you do those. Uh, I might have another as part of the lesson to give them more structure than just open the book and page, you know, turn to page whatever um, and do this assignment and that assignment, that doesn't work real well in the classroom. So it's definitely probably not going to work when you're not there standing over them, right? So I might, again, give them a link. So I linked a video here. So I might 
might just link that video and get them thinking about just preview the upcoming lesson and ask them a couple questions. And on my main page, you know, students will see this and now I will see what Anna responded. So she responded to those questions. A classmate or myself could go ahead and respond and reply back. Um, you know, to Anna or to one of the other students. So you can get some asynchronous um, communication going and they don't have to just respond in, in typing, they can respond through an audio or a video as well. I might just remind them or give them some choice activities. Okay, so there's a lot of things that you can do to make this interactive. One, uh, so for example, right here, Anna replied, because here I asked hit reply and record audio or video. I don't want them to just do everything in writing now. So she, I ha can have her reply to that prompt. Okay, okay. And the rose con leche is muy dulce. So we can have them respond in their level of Spanish, and then I could go ahead and also give them some feedback on that. Um, one of the greatest things I'm going to show you out of this, one of my coworkers uh, learned this, and I thought this was fantastic because I don't know that any of us knew that you could do this, but you can embed a YouTube video back here when I first started. Remember, I just put a link, right, a hyperlink to this video, but my friend Debbie and colleague figured out how to actually put that video right in the post. So they can just click on it and not have to go anywhere else. So you can embed that video as well, okay? So let me show you how you post something. So this, these are all the previous posts that I've put on the board. I'm gonna go to the bottom where I get a text box and I get a bunch of options. You'll notice right here, there's an accent drop down sort of thing. So there's no excuses for students not to use their accents. I can change the color of things of the text or the background. I can do bold italic. So I can do some, you know, word, uh, you know, processing type um, activities. I can line things up. I can number things, bullet things. Here's the hyperlink. So again, if I wanted to send them to the learning sites, um, just to make sure I could put that in there. And I would definitely recommend having them open whatever website in, in, a, in a new tab. That's gonna be um, the easiest way for them so that they don't have to go back and log in to the learning site again, et cetera. So I could go ahead and insert that. Now notice it doesn't, it, the hand option goes so you can see it's a link, but I'm probably going to want to go ahead and change the text color to blue and maybe bold it because that's what students know, you know, usually that's what it, what indicates that something's a hyperlink. So you can kind of, you, you know, do that pretty easily. Um, and I also might want to be, you know, click here, um, you know, and, and let them go to do that. So that is um, one option. I can add a picture if I have a, you know, an, a URL that has a certain image that I want to use, but I can also right click and copy and paste an image in. So let's say I did, I'm gonna lose what I just did there, but that's okay. I wanted this image in there because I want them. Yes, I could say go to page 194, but instead, I want to actually go ahead and save that picture. And then I can pull it in. So we can go ahead and then pull that in to the um, classroom form. All right, so we're going to go back there. So you can add pictures. And then I wanted to show you how to get that YouTube video in there. Notice the rest of my stuff was gone because I didn't actually post it. Um, but let's go and look really quick on YouTube. And we're going to say that we want a video. The way you're going to get oh, the video is you're going to go to share and you're gonna click on embed code. So you're gonna actually copy that embed code. And notice you can take, you can start at 
a different thing. So if I wanted to start this five seconds in or 10 seconds in, or if there's a certain part that I wanted to play, I could do that as well. But I'm gonna copy that embed code. And then all I'm gonna do is paste that embed code in there. And when I post it, the video is gonna go ahead and come up in the classroom forum. I could have put some instructions above that and then students would be able to reply to that video, okay? So let me show you as well. I could also go ahead and add a file. Remember I said you could add a PowerPoint or some sort or add some sort of uh, supplemental document or uh, that the students might want or need. I could add it audio instructions instead of just reading. And I could also add a video recording because believe it or not, those students want to see your face. <laughs> they may not have appreciated you when they were standing in front of you, but they're probably going a little stir crazy right now. So you could personalize a message for them using uh, the video and they would appreciate that, I am sure. So I'm going to go ahead and just show you what it looks like from the student side as well. So let me pull up the students view. Give me one second here. All right, so here we've got, oops, I lost it. We've got the students view. So this is Anna Martin, okay, and she went, I can go ahead and we're gonna go to her main page, go down to the class, they're gonna go down to the classroom forum. And then she's going to see all of the posts that I have. And let's just say this one, for example, I could go, she could go ahead and reply. She'll have the same options. So she could make a video of her own, for example, and go ahead and put that in here using the embed code um, if she wanted to, or she could add a file. She can add a video recording uh, so that you know that um, it's her that, that is doing the speaking, for example. Um, so this is something that really, especially with this um, time period that we're looking at where you're not able to give your students all those little tips and tricks and reminders and everything like that, you can still stay connected with them asynchronously um, through text, print, video, audio, um, to just kind of keep that, that relationship with them uh, that you've established going. So that is the classroom forum. I think it is a great, um, resource. We did about a week ago, we did a webinar. Um, Debbie Espithia did a wonderful webinar about the classroom forum. And that is actually going to be on our website. So if you go to waysidepublishing.com, go to where it says learning site, and then it goes down to remote learning. That's where you're going to be able to find some of the videos that we have had and are going to have. So if you missed that video with uh, WSPT about the classroom forum, it's right here. Um, so it was a nice probably hour long video really digging into some great ideas of how you can use that classroom forum with your students. All right, I think that's all I had with the classroom forum. Terry, if you wanna take it back. Or... Well, I have some questions. So if one of you could go back to the learning site so we can answer a couple of the questions that have been coming in um, during the web. Okay, um, let's see. Hi, Kristen. Um, let me see if I can get back control here. Um, I've got the learning site up. I've got the dashboard up in French. Can you all see that? No, we were seeing Michelle screens. Yep. Okay. So go up to change presenter and you should be able to pick me up. There we go. Okay, great. You got it. So Ryan was wondering how he knows what the different types of assignments are that you were um, showing in the content tab or getting to through the flex text. So I thought maybe we could run through what those icons mean and that might help him understand um, how you can figure out what the different 
assignments or activities are. Okay, so let me pull up those icons. Um, I think that was actually in our resources. Actually, if you just go to like one of the de tone sections for one of the units, those are the icons in the textbook. I think he was referring to the icons in um, the learning site next to okay. like content tab. Hold on a second, Ryan. We're, we're, we're going to be there in a second. It's searching. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Maybe just click on Comb Detailed 1. Okay, here we go. Okay. All right. Here is this is the very beginning of the chapter. Uh comment dit on numéro um. Okay, oh, here actually, we go. Not in the flex text, Terry, in the content tab. So when they have the list of all the activities. Going back to the content tab. Okay. All the way back to the content tab. Okay. All right, Ryan, just remember that this is uh, not exactly the way that uh, we recommend you go in. We recommend you start with the flex text. But okay, so I'm going to go to unit one. Okay, and we're going to go to the vocabulary section, vocabulary number one. Okay. So those icons there, Terry, that's what he was asking about. Like, how does he know what those mean? Okay. So, uh, first of all, that icon uh, picture that um, I had talked about in the flex text, that I believe has all of that information on, but let's go through it, okay? So here, you've got a circle with a question mark in it, okay? That is a quiz, kind of looks like a stopwatch, actually, okay, with a question mark in it. That is, that means this is a quiz, okay? And remember that the word quiz in our learning site simply means something that needs to be um, graded, okay? Um, this here, okay, you can see the speaker, that's uh, a listening activity, it's an audio file. This paper here with lines on it is a writing activity. Here we've got a video activity, so it's viewing and listening. The speech bubbles here, these indicate that this is a, a interpersonal activity, okay? And and that's that's it for this one. I think that covers almost everything. So we're looking at all the different modes of communication. We're looking at speaking. We're looking at uh, interpersonal. We're looking at viewing and listening. And we've got our our quizzes, all of our things that need to be graded here. Does that yeah. answer? Can you add a little bit, to that, Terry? When you see the stopwatch with the question mark in it, and you said that indicates a quiz, yes, any type of activity that can be graded in our online platform. So those are the activities that will show up in your gradebook. Okay, so it could be listening, speaking, reading, writing, any type of activity that you can grade online. And then the audio file, the one below it is just the pure audio file. It's not the actual activity. It's just the file for that listening activity. The acti If there were an activity with it, that would be listed with that stopwatch icon with the question mark in it. Okay, right up here. Yep, exactly. Okay, I'm gonna click on that for a second. Let's see, oh, the preview. We can preview it and here it is, okay. So you've got that audio file that goes along with um, this, this activity, this written activity, okay? And this one can be graded by the computer, okay? By the learning site. Great. Um, can you go back to the Comme du list that we had up? Okay. Yeah. Well, the next, well, the one with the piece of paper. So that one indicates it's a PDF file. Um, which leads to another question I had, but if you click on that, once you open that one up, Terry. So that's a PDF and all those PDFs are typable. So anywhere where it's kind of grayed out, 
students can type their answers in and submit it. And we had someone asking about, well, then how do they submit it after they type their answers into that PDF? Okay. Yeah, so when you type your answers into your PDF, all you need to do is save it, is save it, okay? It will save as a PDF, and then you just can submit it to your teacher the same way that you would submit anything else. It just, um, you know, whether that's by email, some teachers actually have Twitter accounts that they upload the files to different things, okay? Yeah. Yep, and that kind of leads nicely into the next question, which is about Google Classroom, because students could also submit that via Google Classroom. And on um, our activity, so maybe go up to activity two again, that first one. Because someone was asking about, well, how do they post an assignment in Google Classroom? Because they, you know, you mentioned in the what's new that we just integrated with Google Classroom. And they wanted to know, well, how do I post to Google Classroom? And it's as easy as clicking that share button. Do you want to show them where that share button is? Yeah. Google Classroom. There it is. Okay. Yeah. Super so for easy. Activity, they can click share and it will show up in uh, their Google Classroom they have set up. Any other questions, Kristen? Those, I answered a few in the background that were specific uh, to teachers who are asking, but those are the three that I had come up that I thought were applicable to everybody listening. Okay. Okay. Well, I hope everybody learned something tonight and uh, I'll give you a little bit more time to, to sit there and think if you have any more questions, just know that we are always available. You know how to get in touch with us. Um, let me see if I can uh, put up my contact information. Uh, I don't have my PowerPoint right here. So what I'm going to do, uh, wait a minute, here it is. Okay. Um, Okay, this might be easier if I just give you my contact information. It's T H A M M A T T at waysidepublishing.com. Okay, um, so you're welcome to send any questions that you have um, at any point. And uh, let's see, I'm going to show you. Okay, I'm going to show you the screen. Okay, and these are all of the instructional coaches um, who work uh, with, with Wayside. We're all available for your help, to, to help you. Just use the first initial of our first name and our last name and we're at Wayside Publishing. Um, I'll hang out a little bit here. If you have any more questions, you're welcome to ask them. I'll see what I can do to answer. And I uh, just wanna thank everybody who was online today. Thanks for taking time out of your busy days. I know things are not normal. Um, thanks for spending some time with us tonight. And thanks to the fellow uh, team members that work um, at Wayside Instructional, uh, Wayside Publishing. It was really, really great to have you here tonight. So, okay, so I'll hang out and uh, let me know if you have any more questions.